the law is an ass, and so are certain senior police officers, particularly the assistant chief constable from Nottinghamshire Constabulary, who told the families that they'd done everything they could, and then went public and said, we could have done more. When people are in the midst of such unimaginable, fortuitous grief, they do not need to have it made worse by police officers coming out with statements like that, especially from a police service that held a warrant, an arrest warrant for this man for nine months and clearly did not locate him. There are many, many more questions to be asked. And one thing that's not been covered by anybody, and I am particularly keen to explore, is did Valdo Calacane have a history of drug taking? I don't know either way whether that's yes or no, but I think it's very interesting. I think it's in the public interest to discover whether he did or did he not, because if he did, it could be that this schizophrenia, to a certain extent, extent was self-induced by him selfishly taking drugs. We will have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. If anybody has any contact with him in the past and can help me out with that question, I'm on various social media platforms and peterblexley.com. But if, if you were to find out, Peter, that he had been taking drugs, if he had been using drugs, what could happen now to make any difference when sentence has already been passed, when an acceptance of diminished responsibility has already occurred? If you were to establish that you know local dealers were supplying him or that people admitted to taking drugs alongside him or had been seen or known to have a drug problem, what could you do about it? What could anybody do? At the very least, the public could be informed if there was such previous drug taking and if that was proven, then thereafter, perhaps the law could be looked at in terms of accepting pleas of diminished responsibility if the illness that anybody who's charged with a crime is suffering from is self-induced, i.e. they willingly, openly ingested drugs of whatever description. That might be something for smart break, far smarter minds than me to take a look at from a legal perspective. Maybe I'll ask Nick Freeman about it. He's a smart mind from yeah. a legal perspective. What do you think? Yeah, well, I, um, Peter, the law's already there. If, if self-induced intoxication or drug taking, if that renders incapacity of the mind, that doesn't afford you a defence. Well, then, there we go, you see. If perhaps the police had done a thorough kind of investigation to establish whether that had happened or not by going back into his past and in his history, we all three collectively today could be having a very different conversation. I'd really like to find that out. Do you agree, Peter, with, with, with actually what Nick has said and, and what the judge I spoke to, the KC, the lawyers and the doctors seem to think, which is, although the family, in the very heat of their grief, are deeply disappointed and dissatisfied with the outcome, with the sentencing, actually, in real terms, this man will be incarcerated in a secure unit of a psychiatric hospital for life, and it's not a soft option, it's a pretty ghastly um, life sentence, really, and that, you know, it, it, it's a kind of nuanced thing, but actually, in practice, it'll be, it'll be rigorous and it'll be, it'll be horrible. It's a lot less ghastly than being in a, in a maximum security prison with serial killers, child killers and other people who do have their, their faculties about them and who have an air of menace around them 24 hours a day. He will not come to any harm in that facility, of that I'm sure. Now, I do hope that Grace, Barnaby and Ian's relatives will just bear with me for one moment because this story chimes very loudly with me. Our youngest son, who's at University of Nottingham, left the same nightclub at the same time as Grace and Barnaby, but him and his mate got in a taxi rather than walking. My heart breaks for everybody affected by this, for the siblings, the parents, and everybody who loved them. Here, here. Thank you very much.